Hi, it's Mark from Nomad Bolt Building. Welcome back to the 2.4 meter project. In the last episode, we made some bulkheads. In this episode, we're gonna install those. So let's get right to work. Where am I at now? So I've got my bulkheads in here. I'm gonna do a quick check. Uh, I still need to scuff up my hull interior. So let me just see that it's square and give myself a reference line to follow. Well, that's pretty darn close. I'm just gonna give myself a light pencil line to follow. I just want to make sure I got a good half inch or three quarters of an inch of scuffed up surface on either side of where this bulkhead's going to sit. And this, of course, is just to ensure good proper bonding because our epoxy has been sitting for quite a while. And uh, epoxy likes a nice rough surface to hang on to. So clean that with up with some alcohol. It's not a lot of dust, so I won't bother with vacuuming. This will be fine. Okay, that looks good. Now I've already given my part a good wipe down with alcohol. Drop that into place. And now I'm gonna do the same thing I did before using some sticks to um, isolate this. So once again, I've got a little block attached to the keels in here. And it's just attached with some double-sided tape. Always think about you know where you're gonna work and whether or not the things that you're sticking in there are gonna be in your way. So the less stuff that's poking way up in the air, the better. Gets hung up on your sleeves and stuff. All right, now I just need a nice size cross ball to attach these two to stabilize it, and then we're ready to roll. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'll just measure back from one of my shear marks here. I got one right here, or one of my station lines. I should clamp these together. right on the money. What I'm gonna do is uh, pop a finishing nail on here. One on the back side. I'll use my little ruler here. With this dog clip on it as sort of a little marking gauge. I, think I, I like this idea. So just using that to control measure it oh, right on the money. That's perfect. Okay, so same thing. All right, so that is rock solid. That's rock solid. That's ready for being for tabbing in place. So I'll just tab it on the back. Or maybe I can even fill it the whole way on the back. It's probably stable enough. Okay, here we go. Let's see, I guess I'm going to start up here in the corner. I recently had a fellow suggest I tape off where my fillet's going to go. And then you can simply pull the tape off. And I've done that, but I have never had a lot of luck with eyeballing exactly how much to do that, how much space to give the tape. So I've inevitably made a big mess in the end. I figure if I can learn to eyeball how big the, far the tape has to go, I should be able to, be able to eyeball how big my epoxy bead needs to be as well, so I decided I'm just going to go try to eyeball the epoxy bead instead. Oh, I did a terrible job on my piping bag here today. It's a mess.
here we go. Our bulkheads are glued in, and they look pretty good to me, so we can lose these guys right here. So I've left little limber holes in here, and that is just for long-term life of the boat. If the flotation foam gets waterlogged in the future, we have the possibility of just opening up the drain hole down here and letting it all drain right through. And that's not a great sit situation, obviously, but you know, it's better than nothing. So any foam sitting in here that gets waterlogged, hopefully the water can migrate down and down and down and out. And that's what we want. We want the water out of these compartments. All right, I've been known to be very stubborn and opinionated, but I do like to try and temper that by having an open mind towards suggestions. Now, what's suggested I try using masking tape to help with this filleting job? Let's give that a shot. Someone suggested I try taping off my fillets, so we're gonna do that. But I'm gonna give myself a little line to follow, so I'm just gonna use my ruler here. Time to do some filleting. Now in one of my previous videos somebody commented that they were watching me do a fillet and using a knife to just clean up the squeeze out and they said why don't you just tape off the joint and fillet it and then peel off the tape leaving you a nice crisp result. Well I'm not convinced. I've tried this in the past. I was never happy with the results. We're gonna try it again. Now you'll notice I have some orange tape here and some green tape here and so I was I laid out a line on the uh, bulkhead and on the hull pencil line and then I followed it with my tape which is why I use this orange tape because it's flexible then my brother was hanging around here and he's in the trades he's a painter and he said why don't you try this technique using a knife to scribe scribing with a knife to get your tape line cut so let's try this on the other side Okay, here we go. All right, I already cut this line and I just used my folding rule as my uh, standoff, but I'm gonna switch to a little block here because I think this is probably gonna be easier. So I'll just take a utility knife here. already unconvinced. This is more trouble than it's worth. Frankly, I'd be filleting by now if I wasn't screwing around with this tape. This is only part of the part of the challenge. We'll still have the part where I got to peel this tape off and not ruin my fillet. So we'll see how that goes. So far, I'm for freehanding it. I say tape no, freehanding yes. Okay, let's do this side now. See, it's just really awkward to try and work down in this space like this with tape. This is not a not a shape that two hands easily get into at the same time. Okay, let's try this again. This is the 
part that drives me crazy. Don't do that. well-meaning YouTube viewer, this sucks. plastic piping bag here for this operation. Oh no, don't do that to me. Blowing out on me. It's no good. Okay, we're off to a bad start for sure. As I predicted, this tape is doing absolutely nothing for me for the most part, it looks like. What followed after that was a lot of cursing and swearing as I tried to pull that masking tape off and not mess up my fillets. And I have to say that I failed at that. What can I say? I gave it a shot, but sometimes I just like to do things my way and I don't claim to have the best way to do everything, but it's the way I've gotten used to and I get relatively proficient at it. Now moving on to the back deck. I mentioned putting a sub deck in. Now the sub deck was a way of me dialing in the volume of flotation we put into the aft portion of the hull, but it's also going to allow drainage from the rudder tube through to the cockpit where our bilge pump is, and it's going to allow all of our steering cables to pass under the main deck without having to run little plastic tubes through a sealed bulkhead area, which seems like a bad idea. So let's just take a look at a few of the little details of how I'm going to install that sub deck. Now I just need to create some little cleats that are going to support this lower deck here. So I've got a red cedar one on this bulkhead and I've got a spruce one on this bulkhead. Now this one I've got spruce because I want a little extra strength. The rudder is coming through here. This needs to have a lot of strength to it so the rudder is going to be leaning on it back and forth so I just want to give it that 
extra bit that the Sika Spruce can provide, but uh, shave weight, I've tapered it out a little bit. Up here I've got a red cedar one, and uh, the red cedar is a little bit lighter. Mostly it's for gluing, and this is going to be, you know, a plywood glued to this plywood, so there's going to be a lot of strength there. I don't need the strength of the Sitka over in this area, but I do need a good gluing surface, so that's why that we're going to use that. We're going to use red cedar for all the other gluing surfaces here as well. So I've got a bit of material here that I'm just using as a straight edge with a point on the end. And I'm using this to project across to mark where they, my cleat needs to go. So I've got a cleat that's going to run from there. Just drop that over here. Or to there. And of course this cleat's going to be straight. Because this deck is straight and flat. I'm going to get this margin in and then we're going to make some other little cleats that are going to go up against the sides of the hull and we're going to actually shape those to match the side of the hull. So I'll show you how I do that when I get to it. Now for measuring the length of my cleat, there's a little trick that we use in cabinet work a lot of the time, which is just two sticks with the ends pointed and you just slide them until they touch your perimeters of wherever you want to fit something to. And I can be a little bit shy on this too. I, can, I, don't, I don't need it to go all the way across and touch the hull exactly. I've got fillets all holding everything together, so it's okay if everything comes up shy. But anyway, this is the you know the general width. And then I use like these little dog clips here. Just to hold that together. And so there's my finished length. Right there. So we'll cut another piece of material, another piece of little another little stick of red cedar to go on there. We'll glue that in place. I'll also be adding a deck beam right here on the against the edge of this uh, bulkhead as well, and that's partially to provide to stiffen this up near the top and to provide a gluing surface for the deck because we're going to have a very large deck opening that's going to allow for us to get at the um, to get at the rudder uh, area here. Now I need to lay out where my margins are going to go and I just wanted to show you something here. If I just try and run a pencil along the bottom of the hair, it hardly shows up at all. It kind of scuffs off very easily. There's a very simple fix for that and it's something we need to do anyway. If you scuff up that surface for bonding, Pencil shows up just fine. And it doesn't rub off. Not nearly as easily, that's for sure. Okay, it's time to try and scribe these guys to fit in here. So just cut this little cleat off short and it's gonna get trimmed shorter still, but I wanted it to lie right on top of these bulkheads and this cleat here, and that's just to position it. Um, it'll drop down, but it'll, this will give me an accurate enough shape. And so, because this is red cedar, it's really hard to see pencil lines on it. So I'm just using a white color pencil crayon. But it doesn't fit into my dividers, otherwise I would use dividers or a compass to, to do this job. So I'm just using a piece of scrap wood to make the pencil stand out a little bit further. And I'm just going to angle it and drag it along here now. Scribing, usually you want to make sure that you're keeping your compass parallel, uh, in, like in the same orientation through the whole scribe. And this technically would not do that, but this is, it's not a lot of, not a ton of shape here, so it's close enough. So there we go, we've got that. Now there's another bit of information we need, and that is the angle of the sides. So I'll take my little bevel gauge here. And this angle changes. What I want is the angle that's closest to perpendicular. So I'm going to take it from this end and just pick that angle up. I'll just mark that angle off over here so I don't lose it and give myself a little indicator as to which angle I want. Over on this side it's a little steeper 
but uh, that's okay. I'll cut the one consistent angle and then I'll whittle it back to fit. So I know I've got to come back to this angle at this end. So I've got the two, my two separate angles here that I can work from. So I'll just start by setting the bandsaw for the first angle and cut that off and then it's on to hand fitting. So a couple minor details that might be of interest to some. Um, I've got these little ledger cleats that I've put in here to support this lower deck. And to fasten those in, uh, mostly the epoxy was holding them in place, but they needed just a tiniest bit of pressure just to make sure they didn't drift. And so this was a little solution just using some sticks and some spring clamps. And this one was moving a bit on me, so just a pop the staple through there just to help tack it. You can see the staple barely grabbed, maybe just a sixteenth of an inch. But that's all that's necessary sometimes. And over here, I used these little plastic battens here to help keep this guy from drifting. It kept wanting to sort of ride up a little bit. So, um, so I just popped those on to provide a little downward pressure. And uh, that's all that was required to keep those in place. So I've got just a tiny bit of material to clean up here. Um, although it doesn't really matter too much. As long as the squeeze out doesn't interfere with the deck sitting in place, I'm fine. And I could even make the decking just a little bit shy to let epoxy fill in around it. That's not a terrible thing. So, so far so good. Things are nice and rigid here. This is going to get plywood all the way across, so this is going to be super rigid now. And even if I didn't put this cleat on, it would probably work pretty good but uh, this is just giving us a little more gluing area for that panel in there. And I need to think about my rudder tube. And that's going to be coming up through here. And what I want to do is just slip my rudder into place and find, figure out some way to just sort of clamp it in place against the hull so that it's perfectly aligned with the skeg. And then I'll slide that on, down onto it and then figure out what I need to do to fasten this in place. Okay, now anywhere we can save a little bit of weight on this project, we're going to try and do so. So in this case, we've got some bulkheads that have a lot of acreage on them. And it doesn't need all that material there. So let's knock a few pieces out and try and lighten this thing up just a little tiny bit. Alright, I put a little backing block on here so I don't blow a hole in the back side of my plywood. And before I drill my hole, I should probably calculate the best possible location for it. So I'll just punch in a few numbers here. Perfect. And right about here. That ought to do it. The center line. So I think here. Let's carry this over. There. Perfect. Okay, there we have some lightning holes, and I guess the question is, what did that save me? Well, let's go check it out. 31.8 grams. Well, how much is that? Well, that is basically uh, just a, a little more than one shot of epoxy. So that means there's one shot of epoxy's weight that I saved by pulling that out. So that's kind of worthwhile, actually. That's it for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, please do come back and join us next time. I want to thank all of you for watching and all of my supporters on Patreon. Now, get off the couch, go out to the workshop, and get your hands dirty. Ciao for now.